Okay, so today we're going to be making something called a collagraph, and this is um, what we do in printmaking, and it's really good for using just objects that you don't really know what to do with, you don't really need them, um, but they're good. So like old pieces of cardboard, um, old pieces of foam, really anything that has a little height to it. So what, this is um, your kind of plate, so it could be just a piece of cardboard. And we are going to use some foam for this collagraph. Like I said, you can use other supplies as well. And if you're just going to use foam, you can just put some Elmer's glue on the back and glue it right onto the cardboard. And obviously, you would want to plan out an image before you just start, okay? So I've kind of already planned out an image, so I'm, you're going to be watching me create it here. And if anything's too big or too long, use your scissors and trim it off. And these are some fun foam pieces that already have um, objects cut out for me, so I can use these or I can create them on my own. So for instance, here I have drawn something on an old piece of foam. And you can just cut, it's very easy to cut, cut it out. So what I might do is I might kind of arrange things here before I glue them down just to make sure it's exactly what I want. And this is um, netting, like this is what oranges can come into, or come in like a little bag. So I've cut this up and you can actually lay this down. Um, and that would be a fun texture. You can even glue things on top of it. So I think this is how I want my image. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, if I have just nice clean pieces of foam like this, all I need to do is put the Elmer's glue on it. Glue them down. But for this netting, if you're going to use something like that, I have um, glue mixed with water, and I'm taking just an old kind of run-down paintbrush, not a good paintbrush, and I'm painting the glue onto it, and this way it'll just stick to the cardboard. But the glue's going to have to dry completely for it to stick really secure, so while it's wet, it might not seem like it's sticking. But as long as you don't mess with it too much, and let it dry, you should be okay. <coughs> so I've made this, and now I can kind of um, recycle scraps, and I'm gonna want this to dry completely before I do the next step. So here's another one that I've made, and this one is all just shapes and design where this I kind of made like an actual scene with a frog and flowers and a butterfly. This is just, this is called non-objective. There's no real actual picture here. It's just all shapes. And I've placed out the shapes in an interesting way. And this is just as good. Um, so I want you to pick, do you want to do a non-objective or do you want to do an objective, kind of like a representation of something real or just a design, okay? So both of them look very cool and we just need these to dry. Okay, so everything on my plate is dry, and so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use um, printmaking ink. You can do this with paint. Um, I prefer doing it with ink because I like the texture of ink a little better. It's a little more sticky. And this is called a brayer. It looks like a paint roller. And you're going to have your ink in a tray, and you want to roll the ink in all directions. Basically, when you start to hear it kind of crackling, that's when you know you're good. 
Okay, so you want your entire brayer full of the ink. And you're going to put the ink right on top. This is why it doesn't matter what color your foam pieces are or whatever you're using to lay down because we're just going to put ink right on it. And you want to make sure you get enough ink to cover it all up. Okay, so just keep going over it. you have enough ink then you want to take your paper in this case we're using um, our shade paper and you want to lay it on top and you want to rub with your fingers everywhere so hold it down with one hand and rub with the other hand if you just do this nothing's really going to happen you kind of have to press in everywhere so you should be feeling all the texture underneath your fingers. And you want to rub probably longer than what feels comfortable because you really want to make sure you're transferring the ink from your plate to your painted paper. Make sure you get your corners. A lot of people forget to get the corners and the edges. All right, once you feel you've done a good enough job, Pick a corner, and here you've created a print. And the cool thing about this is I could put more ink on this and get new paper, and I can make print after print after print until this pretty much would just fall apart. Okay? So that's how we make a collagraph print. Okay, so here's another example of a collagraph print, and this is one where I made like an actual scene. Um, and you can tell you're going to get some of these little spludges on your print, but that's kind of what gives your print charm to show that it's kind of handmade. Alright, so these are both examples of how you can make it with just non-objective shapes, or you can make an actual scene um, or representational image making a collagraph.